A lot of times uh, I'm asked now, where are you getting the support? How come you're doing so well on the internet? What's going on around here? And uh, I said, well, it just might be that freedom is popular. <laughs> A lot of people ask me, why do we get so many young people uh, coming into our campaign? And there's a lot of different reasons, but I might suggest that one good reason is that uh, maybe they're seeing what we're giving them. Uh, they're giving them the burden of, uh, of the paying for the entitlement system. There are less of them in that age group, and uh, they know they're not going to get anything out of it, and they're waking up to this, this fact. And young people, like a lot of other people, sort of like the privacy of the internet. And they like my position that says, never tax the internet and never regulate the internet. Once again, because I don't want to interfere in personal habits and I don't want to interfere in the internet, this does not mean that I have to defend everything that's on the internet. I certainly don't want to defend everything that's on the television set. The, problem, the, the issue is who regulates us? Do we, are we responsible for our own lives? Are we responsible for our children? Are we responsible as parents? Or is it the government that is the nanny and is supposed to take care of? That's the only issue. It's not whether we endorse bad habits or good habits. We endorse freedom. You know, the founders were very well educated and they came to the conclusion that individual rights were very important. And they talked about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness and they believed in property rights. And I'm a strong believer in that. I believe in natural rights. I believe in God-given rights. I don't believe any rights come from, to us from our government. Governments are designed and the purpose is, is to be very limited to protect those rights so that individuals don't take them from us you, with the use of force. It's very easy to accept the principle, don't use force on other people. We, we should set an example. You know, the neocon argument is that we're over in the Middle East because we want to democratize them and we want to spread our goodness through force. <laughs> and uh, there, there is a lot of goodness in America and we have a lot of good things to talk about and to spread and the principles of liberty. But it can't be done with force. It has to be done by setting good examples. And when our house is set, setting good examples and we have a free and prosperous society, others will want to emulate us and follow us. And that is the only way this can be done. You can't force your neighbors to behave like you think they should. And you can't force the economy to be fair and equal because you end up with socialism and it doesn't work. And you can't force other people to live like we think they should. At the same time, the responsibility, it does fall on us to promote the cause of liberty, to get people to understand why it is important to believe in liberty. I am so convinced that the cause of liberty can solve so many of our problems. It can't cause, uh, you, you know, perfection, obviously not. But if you really want to solve the problems of poverty, say, and unemployment and economic concerns, you have to believe in the free market. Uh, it, it, the free market is humanitarian. It's the government force that is, that is inhumane. So if we as conservatives... If we, and we as conservatives and libertarians understand this issue, we are the humanitarians because it does produce more goods and services and it distributes them better than any other system. Socialism fails. It always fails because they don't have a pricing structure and it brings down people down to a certain level. And yet, this our country right now is moving in the direction we get involved in things we shouldn't be involved. We've been involved in medicine for 40-some years now and nobody's happy. 
So what are they talking about? Nationalized health care. You know, so there's a lot of things that, that can be done without dependency on the government. And uh, we have been blessed. We've been very lucky to have lived in America. But we have an ominous responsibility right now. Those of us, and it sounds to me like most everybody that's here tonight, recognize that we do have a problem. So we have a responsibility for ourselves and our family and our country to do something about it. And that is to spread this message, to fully understand it so others will accept it. This is a very, very important campaign. It's important for all of us. It's important for the next generations. It's important for us tomorrow because we have to deal with uh, our foreign policy and troops dying on a daily basis. But the responsibility is on us because we still do have a lot of freedoms. It's great that we have the internet. It's great that we have that media equalizer that we can reach so many people. reasons why our movement is growing by leaps and bounds, and I was on the pessimistic side, is the fact that information is so readily available. In the 1950s, when I became interested in the freedom philosophy, it was very hard to find books. I certainly didn't get them from my college classes. I didn't get them from my public schools. And yet, I had to look and search. Today, you don't have to search. All you have to do is have a desire and look on the internet. And there are more professors now than there used to be. Those. There's every reason in the world to be optimistic, realizing that the problems exist and we can deal with them, it, but it is not that complicated. Almost every problem that we face today is the fact that we didn't take the good advice that we had from the founders and that we don't follow the rule of law. If we would say, what is the problem, whether it's a monetary problem or a tax problem or a free market problem or whatever, and say, well, let's look at the advice that we were given. Maybe we can correct things. And I am fully confident that if we did that, we could revive the true spirit of America. We could make sure that our wealth is not borrowed and that we can become wealthier and more generous than ever before. That is what I strive for. That is what I would work for and <clears throat> as president. And that is what I thank you for, for coming and supporting those views. Thank you very much.